This is actually um, Sunset Dragon's art version of her. So it's like a, yeah, it's like the Queen Merida version. A long time ago, no, <laughs> um, uh, uh, my, I guess like I discovered Lolita before cosplay. And if you don't know what Lolita is, it's like a Japanese street fashion, but there's huge elements of it in anime. It's basically like the puppy dress, like frilly dress, cute girl with the headdress and everything sort of style. Um, so I kind of got into that first um, through a friend. And then one of my other friends was like, you should come to a convention. And we were like, what was that? And uh, so, uh, when we went to one and I was like, oh my God, this is like amazing. And this was kind of way before cosplay was kind of mainstream, I guess. So it was really difficult to find costumes online and through other people and things like that. It just wasn't really a thing then, yeah. Um, so I actually learned to sew so that I could like make cosplay and Lolita stuff. So, <laughs> um, I think my very first one was uh, Chi from Chobits with the little Persicom ears, yeah. That's my first one. I really like um, artist renditions and fan art of things, um, especially like the fancier the better is kind of my style. Um, so right now I'm doing like a really fancy shiny Magikarp vision. <laughs> um, and then I have um, Peachette from like Mario, which I know I'm like really late to that party. I actually just like, I finally got my switch for Animal Crossing and like I finally started playing and I was like, oh my gosh, she's so adorable. Like I have to do that. I've, um, I've actually been in a lot of them and um, I also have judged them. So I've been on both sides of the table. So I now, um, I plan on doing one more. I was planning on competing this year, but um, Everything happened, so didn't get to do that. So I'm saving it for the next year. Um, but yeah, I'm competing at a professional level now. So statistically, I've only not won an award at one competition that I've competed in, which sounds like right, but like it was really cool. I actually won. Um, I won best novice, and then the next competition that I was in. I was actually bumped up to masters and I won best in masters. And so I've competed at masters ever since then, um, which is really kind of stressful because masters level is very, you know, crazy. Yeah. Sewing is like my main, my main game. I've been sewing for a really long time, like almost, I don't know, 16, 17 years now. And um, that's, that's like where my comfort is. Um, but I'm starting to kind of branch out. So I do know how to do armor, like foam smithing and stuff. I'm just not like super great at it. And I am getting better at wig work too. Um, Cause I want to know how to do everything. So I'm getting better at those other things. I think you're a professional cosplayer when you make your livable income off of that. Um, so for me, I mean, like I consider myself I don't know if I would consider myself a professional cosplayer, but I do, I have a company where I do cosplay commissions and that's what I do for a living. So for me, I'd be like a professional costume maker, but I don't know if I would be a professional cosplayer. So it just kind of depends. But I think if you're making enough money to like support yourself off of cosplay, then you'd be a professional. I remember when I first started, like no one even knew what cosplay was. And it was like something you hid, like you didn't tell anybody. It was like, you're a weirdo. Like you hid it in your closet and everything. Um, and now it's like so accepted, which is like accepted that you cosplay. So it's crazy to me that we are still like fighting over all these little things. Like you're not the right color. You're not the right weight or whatever. I mean, if you're comfortable cosplaying that, like, go for it. That's the only thing that limits me is my own comfort levels. And I feel like that's how it should be for anybody. I have never used a green screen, so I don't know. I've always been like a location and photo shoots have been something that I kind of like just started doing the last couple of years. Um, where before my, my ex was a photographer. So like we would just get photos at cons all the time. And so now I'm, kind of like, okay, well, 
now I want to get more photos. And especially because my work is at the level that it is, I want all of those details to be caught um, on camera. So I, I think the green screen is really cool for, especially for like crazy locations and things that don't actually exist in real life. So I'd love to, I'd love to try that and see what I could do. I really love um, Kamui cosplay. Oh, she's like super big, um, but I really love how normal she is. <laughs> um, like, her, she's just so like down to earth and kind of goofy and silly. And I, you know, I identify with with that, and I appreciate that that she just talks to you as a normal person, just regular clothes, and she shares so much information, and I really appreciate that. Um, I know, like when I first started cosplaying there was a lot of um don't share your techniques and don't share this and, and don't tell anybody how you did this um which is opposite of like how it is now like everybody's like an open book a lot about how they did things even if it's just oh we can you can buy this pattern off for five bucks off our patreon or, or you know whatever it's such a different atmosphere now so and i and i appreciate that she she points that out that even though we get grumpy about how we had to do things the hard way like isn't it nice that we have all these resources now that we can use? And so that's good. Um, I also really like uh, Kimpatsu cosplay. She's always just like on, on you know, just perfect every day. <laughs> I see her and she does a lot of um, sharing with her, with the way she does things too. And I've used a couple of her tutorials and they were super helpful. So in my opinion, it's kind of about like the sex cell sort of thing. Um, um, I mean, like, and there are some really amazing male cosplayers out there. I'm not saying that they don't exist. I just don't think they get as much publicity or follows um, as women do. And I think a lot of that is um, because a, a, I don't know what the percentage would be, but there are, you know, female cosplayers out there that kind of market more to the um, kind of sexy angle. And so I think that becomes more popular and that's kind of what gets sent around. Because a lot of the male cosplayers that I know of are either, like, super ripped and, like, you know, really buff, like, you know, Johnny Junkers and, and those kind of characters, you know, people. But, or they're, like, super cute, like, Phil Mazzino, uh, Mazzino, uh, Mazzino, saying that right? But, um, yeah, so, I mean, it's, but, I mean, so I've, I know some of them, and, and there's some really amazing, talented armorers out there and stuff, too. But it's a shame that they don't get as much recognition. So, that's my theory. <laughs> so so we went we the questions we've covered so far is how you discovered cosplaying that was the first question the second one was your first cosplay the third was your cosplay plans uh you've also been in multiple cosplay contests which is awesome and one all but one now now we got to hear that story why did you not win that one? Oh, you know what um it was i I really like original character designs. I do a lot of um, original like designs of my own of um, like D and D characters and just like fantasy characters. And yeah. I entered one of them at PCC a couple years ago. And I think part of it was that I didn't really have a performance. And the okay. way that Phoenix Comic Con does their uh, it's not called that anymore. Fan, fan Phoenix Fan whatever. Fusion. Whatever it is now. Um, they basically right. just give like one award or it's like first, second and third in the category of that level. Yeah. So I kind of think it was more performance based. Mm -hmm. So since I didn't really have a performance, I think that was a major part of why I didn't win anything. Um, yeah. And then, you know, and there was also some flaws in my costume, obviously. I just, yeah, I was, it was when I was doing foam work and I was, working with what i had so i didn't have to buy anything and so i <laughs> yeah so there was makes sense um yeah so there was like some like oh this is kind of thin foam to be using for this and things like that but nice but i still got some really beautiful pictures of that costume and it's still something i really like so that's cool very nice so what are some uh top craftsmanship tips that you can offer um i think i mean one of I could give like a couple for for each thing or, or for one for each type of thing. But yeah. um, I know like for sewing, um, mock-ups are super important. So if you don't know what a mock-up is, it's basically like a 
like a fast version of what you want to make. So if you're following a pattern or whatever, you can just like I used to buy sheets at Goodwill and wash them and then just cut my patterns out of those and you sew them up um, using like wide stitches and then you can try it on and just make sure that it fits. And then you can do some tweaking and, and see what you need to fix, yeah. um, especially if you're a beginner. And I mean, what that does is helps you not ruin the fabric that you paid for um, okay. in case you have to take it out or, or whatever you have to do. Cause it's, super frustrating to take all this time in making something and then have it not fit. So I think that's yeah. a super important thing to do. Um, with foam, with foam work, I think the most important thing is proportion. Um, mm. I've seen a lot of people who, when I was judging would make armor pieces that were like, they were trying to proportion them more to the character than themselves. Mm -hmm. And so it would look like the breast plates were too small or too big um, and didn't really fit them and sort of those sort of things. So there's actually, and even with like weapons and things like that, actually looking at the character scale and the weapon scale, and then yeah. you, sometimes you have to do some math, which sucks, but actually, you know, break it down how much bigger would this be compared to my body and not necessarily the, the character. Yeah. And sometimes like you need to make that adjustment anyway, just because like the actual thing would be ridiculous anyway. So... <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes you do need to like change the scale to actually be able to hold it or, you know, or use it. So there's also that to nice. think about. Nice. Um, and then with wigs, the thing I learned, like the biggest thing that I learned is basically like teasing can do almost anything. So nice. Um, whenever you, you see like big wigs, a lot of times all underneath is just teased. And then the top is just like a, a brush and a hair dryer and just smoothing it over that shape. So if you are really interested in wig styling, like that's the key to really like starting practice doing that sort of stuff. <laughs> Find new tutorials on YouTube. But yeah, it was like a game changer for me realizing that you could basically shape with a hair dryer. It was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's uh Nadia says that the Girados uh was top level amazing though. So I guess oh, that's yeah. the the outfit that you the were wearing. Hair. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that was the first time I won Best in Show. Nice. Um, by myself. Very nice. So it wasn't the first time I won Best in Show, but it was by myself. By which felt like a crazy yeah. accomplishment. <laughs> That's cool. So, what's your favorite cosplay you've done? Um, that's so hard. Oh, I so think probably many. my. Um, <laughs> uh, I think probably. My favorite one is um, it's probably Merida. I think just my standard regular Merida mm -hmm. <laughs> because she's like comfortable and like easy to wear. And I've done her so many times that like, you know, I, I've gone to charity events and been her and nice. um, it's just like, She's just fun because she's like a character that I really love and can be, okay. and I have her bow and everything, and it's just really fun. I can do her accent. And it's like super. She's just super fun. Yeah, that's cool. So, what is the worst cosplay horror story that you've had? Uh, so a long, a long time. Well, I keep saying like a long time ago, but um, back in like I don't know, it was like two thousand nine or something. <laughs> I made uh, back in my day. I made a. I know back in the day. Um, I made I made a hot girl cosplay, um, H A W K, not like hot girl, but uh -huh. um, and um, at the time there was very like limited materials for making wings. Like I think about it now, and I'm like, yeah, like I should have known like not to do this. But mm -hmm. the tutorials out there like use like PVC and like chicken wire covered with felt, and like you add all this stuff, and they were super heavy. Um, they were gorgeous, but they were really big and really heavy. And so, of course, the night of or the night before the competition, my harness broke, and Ooh, there was just like no fixing it. There was just no fixing it because it was so heavy that like there was nothing I could like try like jerry rigged like fix it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that was like, and I'm sure anybody who's had to drop out of a competition because of like a malfunction the night before knows that just like 
devastation of like, oh my gosh, I can't like do this. Um, nice. And I never went back and like fixed it either. I never went back and did it. So it was, it yeah. was very sad. <laughs> So when you do cosplay like at conventions, do you always go into character? So like when you do Merida, do you have a Scottish brogue? I do. Um, I actually, the first time I competed as Merida, I talked the entire time to the judges with the accent. Oh, wow. And, Very nice. Um, yeah. And I had a couple of times where, and I spent like, even in the vendor hall, everyone that I spoke to actually used my accent. <laughs> And nice. a couple of people were like, is that real? I was like, wait, <laughs> are you from Scotland? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's good, though, because you know, a lot of cosplayers, they like to you know, be in character the whole time, you know, and it's pretty fun. Yeah. I think um, I do. I've done a lot of different versions of Merida, and I've done a lot of versions of Rarity from My Little Pony. Yeah, um, uh, Nadia says your rarity cosplay is a wonderful inside joke. Yeah, I have so many rarity cosplays. Um, but, and I, I mean, her costumes are so fun to change because she's always just super over the top. But mm -hmm. um, she's also another character I like being in character as. Nice. Because it's just kind of like fun. So what is your funniest yeah. cosplay story? Oh, funniest cosplay story. Woo! I don't know if I have one of those. I mean, I'm sure I do. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, like, you know, in the years that you've cosplayed, there has to be, like, some funny moment where you guys were just laughing or having a fun time. Uh, you know, I could, mean, could be the after we, party I that first, was so funny. Uh, I mean, um, I had, I mean, we, I had a group where we would compete together a lot. And nice. I think some of like the funnest times we had were sitting in the green room backstage, like waiting to go on. And we would play like those little kid games, like Inka Binka Bottle Ink and like to pass the time. Yeah. And like that, those are probably some of like my fondest memories of just like, you know, laughing and joking and playing games backstage with either my friends or with those people we just met like it's like one of the reasons i love competing actually so yeah for all you millennials watching that don't know what ink bink bottle ink is, is where you sit <laughs> in a circle and you ink bink bottle ink court fill it and you stink <laughs> and you're out yeah and then you're out <laughs> <laughs> and the last person standing wins <laughs> you know yeah no it's but uh i mean like when fun. you're waiting you <laughs> yeah. do anything Right. Yeah. No, it's, it's always fun. Yeah. You'll, you'll, you'll come up with creative ways to pass yeah. the time. So what is your best in character interaction that you've ever had? Um, I think a couple of years ago I made, um, Daisy from, from Mario okay. and it was just like my kiddo loves, um, like Smash Bros. And so the latest version that came out when he was playing as her, I was like, man, her costume is like awesome in this version. And so like I busted it out so I could wear it to uh to FIFA Phoenix Fan Fusion. Mm -hmm. And like I know she's a princess, but it's like I didn't expect the kid reaction because in my head I'm like, oh she's like a video game character and like Mario yeah. and so it's gonna be like all the bros and like fighter you know fighting game people mm -hmm. but um yeah. like i had so many little kids that were just running up to me and being like princess daisy and like wanting hugs and getting pictures and like it was just like an unexpected like really warm fun moment and i was like oh like i didn't expect this to be so like heartwarming <laughs> like to wear this yeah. costume um so yeah it was really awesome nice so have you ever cosplayed with a family member i have so <laughs> um my so my son and i have cosplayed a, we cosplayed a lot when he was little little mm -hmm. so when he was like five and you know five six seven uh, he was always um if i was a gajinka like he was the other you know the other type or whatever mm -hmm. the starter or whatever or um, yeah. he would be like link or like any you know we, we did a lot of like standard things but then um but he actually cosplayed a couple of times on it by himself 
But we won a couple of awards together because um, he's he's a big performer now. He's in, in to music and doing musician stuff. Nice. So like he's, I feel like part of the reason was I got him nice and comfortable on the stage early. On. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We together a lot. Yeah, we cosplayed and competed a lot because I mean, it's hard enough like dragging your kid around a convention. So we just yeah. dress up and have fun while we were there. Nice. So, That's very nice. So, what is your favorite cosplay photo of yourself? Um, I think my favorite ones are of Mao, which I don't know if you've, if you've ever heard of Mao Yusha, uh, which is not like a huge anime, but it was an anime. It's basically um, Demon King, and it's kind of mm-hmm. like one of those animes where everybody is named what they are so there's okay. hero is named hero and like the maid is named maid and that sort of thing nice. um but the the main character is a woman but she's named demon king and her and the hero decide to like get married and try and like fix this misunderstanding between like what hell like what all the demons are and what the humans perceive them to be and it's really interesting. Like it talks a lot. It's like an educational anime kind of because it talks a lot about like agriculture and economy and stuff like that slipped yeah. into like all the silly stories and stuff. But um, it's one of my favorite animes and mangas. But she has this gorgeous when you first meet her, this gorgeous red ball gown with a big black cape and these big black horns. Okay. And I just like got these really gorgeous pictures with her, and she's also like one of those characters that I really love. So nice. that also means a lot very nice so what are your go-to stores for cosplay materials or full-on cosplays well of course you don't buy full-on cosplays but you know what materials shops do you go to um i usually so if it's uh if it's stretch like if it's spandex um there's spandexworld.com and spandexhouse.com mm-hmm. and also blue moon fabrics um, that those are like the ones where they have just every color that you could imagine. And um, I think Blue Moon is probably the best one if you're looking for just solids because they have nice. so much. Um, yeah. And then for formal stuff, um, so like satins and things like that, um, here we have like a fabric warehouse called SAS. Um, mm. And it's basically like a giant you know, fabric warehouse where everything is wholesale. Um, so I yeah. shop there a lot for my satins nice. um, because I need a lot of them for big ball gowns and stuff. Yeah. Um, but there's also um, um, on websites, there's a couple of websites that I really like. I mean, like Mood Fabrics is really, really nice. Um, they're kind of on the spendy side, but they yeah. offer like a really wide variety of things. And I feel like that's important in colors and in textures and, and fibers. Nice. And then, um, yeah, and Vogue Fabrics is kind of the same. I mean, I, I like it when, a, like, I've, I've gone on Etsy and, like, searched a lot because I have an Etsy store, so I like to support other Etsy sellers, especially smaller businesses. So I go yeah. on there and try and find new people to buy things from. Yeah. Um, but especially during the pandemic, I, like, had to do that. Uh, yeah. so that was no, of course, of course, yeah. So, but, yeah, uh, but you can find some really great stuff there. Yeah. Dev Deer says, uh, you, um, your cosplay is really great. Yeah. And, uh, Aww. yeah. And everybody agrees with you. Sass is, is great. And, uh, <laughs> as an, is, is an entire day trip as well. Yeah. If you, so if you live in Arizona and you, and you know about Sass, there's three locations, but they're all owned by different people. Yeah. So, um, the, the farthest one, away from me of course i live in the far east valley so um they're kind of far they're so far away uh so from me I, I, so it is a i'm from me, the far especially. east valley too originally so yeah. you know it's it's a so, drive um, the peoria one is the best for statins the best um and peoria, you're talking about someone who's obsessed with fabrics and i know my fibers and i study them and i'm like super obsessed but um, they have really good material for really inexpensive prices. Yeah. Um, and then the one, there's one like more in Phoenix on like Indian school. And, and that one has a lot of like taffeta and satin. And sometimes they surprisingly have like a lot of really nice wool suitings and stuff like that. It's just kind of like weird where they have stuff. 
Yeah, their website is uh, very vague. <laughs> yeah, like you expect things to be like, oh, well, obviously, like this would be with this stuff, but it's yeah. not. So sometimes you just have to search around, and I found some really amazing stuff there. Nice. Um, the Tempe one is the only one where I'm like, mm. um, <laughs> which of course is the closest one, but they're the smallest one. Yeah. And they have a lot of fur, um, and really, but that's it. The the one up in Peoria also has leather. So if you're interested in um, nice. like some larger pieces of leather to work with, they have yeah. they have it there too. Nice, so. very nice. So. Um... Have you ever been mistaken as a different character while in cosplay? Oh, I have such a fun story. <laughs> Go ahead. So, so like a long time ago, when I don't even when the Xbox 360 first came out in Japan, mm -hmm. they advertised it with this ridiculous like mascot girl, and she had like she was white and had like the purple and green accents, and um. She was kind of like, she had like this little kind of dress that looked like the controller, like over like a bathing suit sort of thing. And okay. I remember thinking it was like the cutest thing ever. And like one day I was going to make this. And so, you know, years passed. And finally I ended up making it and I actually used like Warbluff and like had the, the end sticking out. And I convinced one of my friends to be PlayStation mascot girl with me. <laughs> and um, because she has like a capelet thing that has like a giant hood on the back and okay. she had purple hair with a little X like antenna style on, on top. Mm -hmm. And everybody thought I was a girl Buzz Lightyear. Oh, it was, weird. It was okay. like, it never occurred to me that it would look like that. Like it just didn't occur to me. And then I was yeah. at con and like every other person that talked to me was like, Oh, are you like a female Buzz Lightyear? And I'm like, no, oh, no, no, I'm definitely not. <laughs> like, right? like that is weird. Like she had like big clunky boots too. So like, if I think about it, I, like, I guess it, you could, could think of it I had like yeah. the big hood. So it could be like a helmet thing. I don't know. But yeah, it was like, I felt so disappointed because I was like, oh, no, it's definitely not what I am <laughs> at all. Right. So do you like to but, cosplay in a group or solo more often? Um, I love cosplaying in groups. It's, like, super fun. Not, um, I mean, I've, I love the small, like, you know, like, five or less groups are mm -hmm. good. Yeah. And I, I mean, like, I've been in huge groups before, too, and that's just a lot of communication and you know that, that can get a little like difficult to manage if you're the especially if you're the one like managing it right um, but, exactly yeah but i love like smaller groups especially because a lot of times i love the more obscure like minor characters nice so like if i'm in a group it helps like be like oh yeah like you're that person because they see like the main characters and so it kind of comes together as like a full cast sort of thing so, well, that's nice. I don't know. I think it's more fun. Um, but I do cosplay alone often too, just because sometimes I just really want to do something, and you know. Nice. <laughs> hey, it's true yeah. because yeah. when you're in a group, you're like, hey, you can't eat between the hours of two and three because we have to go <laughs> walk over to this side of the the convention. Yeah. You know? uh, so, what is the biggest convention that you've cosplayed at? Um, I think. I went to I went to um, AX one time. I didn't go back after that because it was so crowded. Okay. Um, I think AX and Fanime were probably like the two where it was like, holy cow, this is super crowded. Um, but yeah, I want to say AX was like you couldn't even stop in the hallways. It was like people were just waving you. Be like, don't stop, gotta go, gotta go, gotta walk, gotta walk. So like, right. <laughs> you didn't have any time to like figure out what you're doing. You better know where you're going because they're just gonna make you keep walking until you come out of the building or come into like the big open areas or whatever. So, yeah. um, and for me, like I, I'm a big dress kind of girl. So, um, being in like super crowded cons is frustrating. Yeah, because, because I'm yeah, at, like a giant butt and trying to like angle it around stuff so yep. um, i'm not a huge fan of like super crowded cons i mean yeah they would be fun to go to and just to hang out like 
outside, but then I feel like that's also kind of weird, like going, yeah. buying a plane ticket and going, doing all this stuff, and then you don't even bother to like go inside. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's crazy over in San Diego Comic Con. I've heard, and uh, yeah. It, it would I've be, never been there. There's there's lots of uh, conventions out in California that are just crowded all the time. And uh, one one convention that I'm looking forward to is the Disney ME. Um, and that's the gigantic Disney cosplay uh, convention. It's pretty fun. I really... So, like, one of my dream cosplays on my list of... Yeah. like ridiculous cosplays is um i just went to disneyland for the first time like ever couple, like two or, like two three years ago i went for the first time ever wow um yeah um yeah my boyfriend found out that i had never gone and he was like what it's like <laughs> that's it, we're going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah we were gonna go so i've been twice now um because i went and saw star wars land and then um we were gonna go again um in august but we can't so um yeah. but one of my favorite, like, I have lots of rides and everything, but one of the rides that I absolutely loved was Small World, just because of all of, like, the costumes yeah. in it. Yep, all the costumes. And, um, like, like, one of my dream, like, cosplays is to do, like, a changing on stage cosplay of, like, some of the Small World characters, where it ends oh, where they're yeah. all wearing, like, the silver, white. Like, I think that would be, like, the funnest thing. And if you got a couple other people to do it with you, it would just be, like, amazing. Yeah, very so, nice. like that's my dream. Like I would want to do it at like a Disney convention too. I think yeah. I yeah. think that'd be so much fun. Transformation cosplays are always fun for competitions. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So have you ever bought a cosplay piece at a con? Um I don't think so. Like a prop or a wig. Yeah, I've bought I'm trying to think. I bought some things like for outfits, um, like for Lolita outfits and stuff, like for the next day. Like if I was going to the tea party or something, I might buy like a headdress or socks or, or something nice. to go with it. Yeah. But I haven't actually, I have a lot of art. I actually have two walls in my studio that are all um, artists, artists, like small artists. Nice. Yeah. And so I love one of them. One side is my, like, my badass ladies wall. And. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, it has like five different fan art pictures of Merida and nice. <laughs> a whole bunch of other, you know, a bunch of other fancy, awesome ladies. Yeah. But, um, so, I mean, like usually when I buy stuff in the vendor hall, I do that. I have bought, um, I bought a couple of costumes over, um, my lifetime. I mm -hmm. bought, I actually bought an Officer Jenny costume off of Amazon nice. and it was like decent. I was really surprised. Um. So it was only like fifty bucks. It was pretty good. Yeah, and it's pretty good. Yeah, so I know like a lot of people buy costumes off of Mick costumes, like M I C. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard good things about them, but they never have like my size in stock of the thing that I want. Yeah, and I'm I, always like, mm -hmm. I bought a Deadpool cosplay <laughs> from me cosplay jooms and it was not the greatest but really okay. <laughs> it was not the greatest <laughs> material but then again it was only 30 bucks so you pay for what you get if you pay more true. it's probably yeah. gonna be better uh quality so yeah yeah but you know hey it, it is what it is uh of course deadpool should not be in a material deadpool should be in leather and so uh the only sucky thing is that if you do cosplay as Deadpool, then you are going to be in a pool of water by the end of the day. Yes. Yep. Um, so yeah, you always have to take that into consideration. And uh, yeah. in Arizona, it gets up to 116 degrees. Just yesterday, we had 116 I degrees, know. and it was so uh, bad. no, it's not fun for cosplay in the summer. And when are all cons in the summer? The summer, I know. Uh, I was, and I was going to mention that earlier. We were talking about crowded cosplays, um, or yeah. crowded cons. I'm sorry. Um, the the fan like Phoenix Fan Fusion got really high up there in numbers and i actually stopped really like i did the competition a couple of years ago and then but like otherwise i don't cosplay there anymore because it's so hot and it's so, so crowded so crowded yeah. Like, yeah it's just it's like wearing a, even a wig there is like just 
so much extra added heat. Yeah. It's so uncomfortable. Yeah. No, yeah, it's it's true because uh, you know, a lot of people will only go to one con and convention per year and that's in January, the Taiyu con. Um that's what Julie uh, Julino goes to. Um you know, and yeah, there's also the Flagstaff one. Uh the convention I up in Flagstaff. Flagstaff. <laughs> which uh that would be perfect for the hot like the hottest outfit you have. You know, because it's yeah. freezing cold up there. I think it's sometime in yeah. in December or. Um, I think they ch they changed it to. Um, Kikorikon, that's right. Yeah, Kikorikon. They, I want to say they changed it to like March and then, but I don't know what it's going to be now because I know they had to cancel it for this hopefully, year. Hopefully, so, hopefully next year we will go back to them. Yeah. You but know. that con, like, is at the Little America Hotel, and I love that hotel so much because they have, like, just three miles of open land out in the back. Oh, wow. So nice. you can do pictures out there. You can get up early and go hiking, like, take the trail walks and, like, look at the squirrels and stuff. Like, it's, yeah. and it's so nice. And sometimes it's still snowing in March. Yeah, so, like, my son so. goes to NAU up there. So, I mean, like, for me, it's awesome because, like, I go up to Flagstaff all the time. But... Um, yeah, I took my wife. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. I, I, sometimes it's still snowing in March. Yeah. So. No, yeah, it's, sometimes it is. I took my uh, wife and kid up to Grand Canyon because they said they never have gone. And oh. I was like, what? Let's go. And uh, <laughs> and then, then my wife comes back and is like, we're moving up there. I was like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so nice. It's so like nice the up there. <laughs> It's like it's 116 yeah. degrees down here, but it was only 90 degrees up there. Okay, yeah. that's a big difference. I'm like, okay, whatever. Yeah. You know, like I when just, the kid graduates, she'll go to any of you then. <laughs> yeah, I just um and they have a crazy um competitive music program there for vocal yeah vocal music. Nice, that's but good. They um we just went back up there and it was like 85, and I was yeah. like, and you're like, dude, I was just like, oh, I'll yeah. stay here for. A little bit. Yeah, stay here. Don't yeah. don't want to go back yet. So, uh, okay. when you do buy wigs, do you like to buy them pre-styled or do you like to style them yourself? Um, it kind of depends. I actually this wig I actually bought from Hee Hee um, mm -hmm. or Swank Wigs. Um, one because I love her and she's an amazing person. Yeah. Um, but two because I really needed um like a crazy big wig for merida um, of course because i course. do her so much and i just i knew i was gonna have to add a whole bunch of hair and like do all this stuff and so i paid her to do it um but i, I otherwise mm. i try and kind of do it myself um just because i want to get better at it so i try and find a wig that's like similar to what i want nice and hope hopefully i i kind of I used to stay away from like crazy wig cosplays, and a lot of times I only had to like cut bangs or like just cut yeah. the bottom and stuff like that. Nothing super mm -hmm. complicated. Um, and now I'm trying to kind of up up the game and do something more with them. So, well, that's nice. So, have you ever uh, been on a co cosplay panel before? Yeah, I actually um, I've done a lot of group panels and. I also do a bunch of panels myself, and most of them are about, like, fancy things. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like in the world of cosplay, one of the things that a lot of people want to do are, like, fancy ball gown stuff. Yeah. Um, but they're, like, really scared <laughs> to deal with, like, that much material and, and, like, how you do all of that. So um, I have a couple of panels all about, like, um, how to do ball gowns and like big dresses nice. and also i have a panel about um like structural so it's all about like corsets and petticoats and hoop skirts and kind of what's underneath everything and mm. i've done a whole bunch of different panels about all kinds of stuff so it kind of depends on the convention and the crowd and what they want so yeah but i've done panels on like sewing on different kinds of fabric i do like a fabric university panel which is basically like what kind of what is fabric and like why do we have different kinds and what's the best kind of fabric to use for different things um because i feel like that's a really important thing that when you start out 
you don't really think about you just go for the cheapest thing and it's not nice. necessarily like the best thing which i mean sometimes you don't have a choice but there could be a, another cheap alternative that would be better <laughs> yeah, right so, yeah. yeah so if you could tell anything to your past self about cosplay in general what would it be um I guess it's like stay true to what you want to do, um, which I definitely do. But <laughs> but I think there's a lot of times where you um, hear things about yourself, or um, you know, you hear rumors or see you know posts online of, of people saying stuff about you, and like it doesn't really matter. So I think like in in cosplay, just like any other habit, uh, any other hobby, there's there's elitists, there's trolls, there's you know people who think it's funny to tear other people down, and yeah, I think it would just be to ignore ignore the haters, you know, <laughs> ignore the haters, and just, yep. yeah, and yep. just do your thing, yeah. No, I think that's uh, just society in general. When you look at cosplays when it was first starting out. It was more, okay, you're going to cosplay as Iron Man because the new Iron Man comic just came out and we need you to be representing him. And your cosplay yeah. had to be like 100% perfect to the character. And uh, you had to look the part, you had to act the part, you had to do everything. Now, with cosplay being your own interpretation you have people who are doing oh the queen merida or the you know yeah. doing oh this is my version of uh kingdom hearts character you know whatever and it's it's awesome how it's blossomed into this big thing so with that that's why we're always going to get the negative comments of oh you you're too fat for that or you're too skinny for that or you're you're not the right color for that because people still have in their mindset that not everybody can be a cosplayer and that's not true so um what is the most difficult cosplay you've done um I would say um, I think oh, just, probably when I first did um, that one I was telling you like has all the amazing pictures of yeah. the Mao costume. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was actually the first like big ball gown dress that I ever made, okay. and um, I kind of it has like these red li or black lines down the front. Nice. And the way that I did that was I, I like covered piping with like pleather. Okay. And which is probably not the best way of doing that. But, um, so it was so thick that like my sewing machine wouldn't sew through it in the fabric. Wow. So I ended up like half hand sewing it and half like machine sewing it and having to like, hand stitch it all, especially the places where the lines met, like at the waistline. And it was just like killer on my hands where <laughs> trying bet, to like I bet. get all this stuff together. And like, you know, it, at the end it looked fine, but it was just like killing me to get to that point. And I, I still have like times where I have to do that. And I, but except now I switch and I use um, a pair of little pliers. Nice. So smarter. <laughs> Working smarter through, instead like, of harder, things, right? Yeah. Just little like jewelry pliers. Like I just pull the needle with that and then I don't have to push it with my fingers. That's so. smart. That's smart. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, every cosplay comes with blood, sweat, and tears. Every single one. It's true. Yep. Yeah. So what's the, the most difficult character makeup that you have ever done? Oh, I still haven't like mastered painting yourself a color yeah. <laughs> so like i feel like i'm pretty good at like makeup um but when it comes to like body paint and like like um because i've done a couple different characters where i had i done ice queen so okay. she's blue i mm -hmm. had a friend do that so like i didn't even do it myself and then yeah. i've done hulk which i actually like airbrushed myself and everything oh wow but it was 
it was so frustrating because of when it was like in the hotel bathroom. So you're like trying to <laughs> not get spray so everywhere. But, it's just like, don't, yeah. don't, I don't want to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it just took a long time to yeah, do that. I'm sure. And it came out okay. Um, and, but I still like, I feel like there's like a, there's a lot more I can learn in that division of, of body paint. I have friends that are like Twi'leks, just like, bam, they're like magical, look nice. amazing. So I, yeah. I have to hit them up and figure out how it's they like, do okay. it. Okay. How do you do that? Yeah. There's lots of uh, yeah. people who like to use uh, the powder, um, the powder yeah. paint, the powder paint. I feel like because it's so hot here, like, it's, yeah, like when I went to Thai, to this, yeah, I went to Thai this year and I did Gulia, um, from Monster High. Yeah. And so I, I painted myself like this gray and even though it was supposed to be like waterproof, by the time I actually got pictures, it was I had running. like all these like kind of runs like spots, especially like in my, el my like elbows and stuff like that. Yeah. But like even up in my face and I was just like, man. <laughs> This is not like fun. I'm a photographer. Can you like just smooth, <laughs> smooth it out, smooth it out? Because right? yeah, so I feel like I admire people who like do the whole body thing because that's that's to take forever. Yeah, maybe um, maybe for uh, green screen photos, you'll you'll do uh, full body paint. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. No. Uh, so, what's your best uh, favorite thing about cosplay? Um, I think my favorite thing about cosplay is that I can create, like, I can really, like, flex my creativity, and mm -hmm. I can create, like, kind of my own version of something, like we were talking about earlier, where people combine things or yeah. do versions. Like, I love that that's available and that that's accepted, and people love that kind of creative yeah. aspect of things. And that exactly. helps me continue learning and, and challenging myself and doing new things. But but I also love that, like, there's just kind of, like, a character for everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like, you watch something and you just love somebody and you can, like, dress up and be them. And I don't know, it's kind of like being able to get away from yourself and being able to kind of, I don't know, just have fun and kind of relax. But... Yeah. It's just kind of like a fun way to be somebody else, I guess. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. So like everything, there's a good and there's a bad. Uh, what are some bad things about cosplay? Um, I it's so um because I've been cosplaying for so long, I you know, I've seen so much of it <laughs> change. Right. And it's it's so strange to me kind of like where it is now where it's so like social media heavy and um, you know, like everyone's making it kind of trying to like make a name for themselves. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, that used I, I, like, I didn't even think about that until like halfway through when I was cosplaying that maybe I should like have a tag name or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I think like the, the worst thing is, is kind of like the drama and a lot of the kind of silly, like, competition and like competitiveness and weird like how like you know if someone's costing is the same thing as you and you get like upset about it and stuff yeah. like that i don't know like i think i think that's the worst thing is like kind of getting caught up in this like oh well, i can't do that because then they're going to be upset at me or you know like like those that sort of like i don't know for me it's like high school drama sort of thing and i feel like in your community it should be like a bunch of friends and you support each other and like mm -hmm do what you want to do and so it, sh it should be like a fun hobby and not something that you you know are scared of or yeah. you know are doing because you feel you have to so i feel like there's there's just some there's a lot of drama in communities and i feel like that's probably the worst of it yes. so yeah it's uh there's always something that we can find um that will help yeah. us branch out more and, and and go into the cosplay community of course like arizona cosplay communities they're amazing they're always willing to help there's always willing to share their ideas um every single arizona yeah. cosplayer i've seen is like they're always friendly and courteous and of course there's always that drama where it's like high schoolness because a lot of high school kids like in 
are getting to cosplay. <laughs> and so there's always that high school drama is like, dude, grow the freak up. If you're going to be in this group, you got to grow the freak up. Come on, man. It's like, well, don't, don't be crazy. And, think, and I've had a couple of people ask like, well, you know, this person's acting like this and I don't know what to you know what to do. And I'm kind of like, if someone's treating you poorly, then like, don't be friends with that person. Simple. Like for me, like common sense, someone treats you like garbage, like, Get away from that group of people and yeah. find, you know, we call it our con family. It's like, it's yeah. our group of people that love us and support us. And they're always going to be there, you know, like they're our friends. Yeah, and exactly. so that's the way it should feel. So, you know, if you're stuck with a bunch of people who are bossing you around or treating you subpar, like there's a lot of other people on the con scene, <laughs> like make some new friends and exactly. you know, find some better people to hang out with. So. Well, I would like to thank you again for coming on to the show and, and, and telling us a little bit more about, you know, behind the mask of who you are and like and how you got started and everything. Um, so is there anything you'd like to tell your fans uh, who are watching or who might watch the rebroadcast on YouTube? Um, I just want to say thank you. I mean, um, I don't think I would be where I am without the support of all my friends especially like with my business and people referring people and just kind of spreading the word or you know when i hear at my panels that this person goes to all of my panels it's it's just really heartwarming to know that like i'm that i mean something to people or that i'm teaching them and helping them learn something um and i hope to you know continue doing that so i'm working on a a youtube channel where it's going to be very educational and you know, um, and fun. So very nice, very nice. Yeah, yeah, and uh, all your socials will be in the YouTube video as well as lo- uh, along with your business uh, uh, link as well. Um, and thank you again for taking the time, and uh, thanks yeah. for everybody who's watching and uh, continues to support cosplay interview. Uh, we keep doing these interviews every weekend uh, on Saturdays, sometimes on Sundays. Uh, so you feel free to pop in anytime and, and follow if you like what you see. So thank you again, uh, Royal Goldfish. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you for interviewing me. All right. Take care. So, thank you. Bye.